hello and a warm welcome to everyone to the chest module revision of team FRCR2B Viva practice session. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, today we have uh, six uh, hot seat candidates and they will be examined by uh, Dr. Sanij who would be acting as the examiner. So Dr. Sanij, if you could, would kindly share your screen and start the Viva. Uh, hi, Sabah. Sabah. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, am I audible? Uh, clear? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, welcome to the uh, chess module of uh, team. Uh, okay, I will share my screen. Yes. So Dr. the first Sayan? candidate is uh, Cyan, right? Yes. Yeah, hello, hello. Am Over I to you. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, hi, Cyan. Hi, uh, hi, hi Sabad. Sab uh, are you recording the session? Yes, I've started the recording. Yeah, uh, please keep a timer also. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sab Sayan, once you start, I'll start the timer. Okay. Yeah, you can start now. You can start now. Okay. I'm provided with the frontal and lateral chest radiograph for skeletally mature adult patient. I can see a, a radio opacity which is present in the left upper, uh, left paracardiac region adjacent to the uh, descending aorta along with the raised left hemidiaphragm. So uh, there, there are some, the surrounding lungs show some fibrotic changes. The background skeleton appears to be grossly unremarkable. There is some subtle pleural thickening I can see on the left lateral aspect. So yeah, uh, 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 you, yeah. you uh, disregard that. Okay. So uh, going with the feature of the uh, opacity, which is present in the left paraortic region, it is not silhouetting the descending aorta. Um, so it is not in the posterior mediastinum. So I'm thinking of the possibility of a superior mediastinal uh, soft tissue. Uh, uh, can I see the, uh, like, uh, is it possible to see the lateral or should I just comment on this? Uh, where, 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 when you are given a frontal radiograph, you have to describe about the lesion in the frontal radiograph and arrive okay. at a conclusion and okay. you have to earn the lateral film. Okay, sure. So I'm thinking that it is either a uh, it is either a it is a superior mediastinal lesion, which can possibly be a, um, of a lymphoma, which can possibly be a lymphoma or a, uh, uh, some lymphatic proliferation, or maybe since it is not contiguous with the neck, I'm not thinking of the possibility of a thyroid enlargement. Other possibility uh, can be that of uh, a lesion which is coming from uh, maybe a thymoma, but it, it does not look that much and last. In the usual practice, I like to compare with the previous radiographs to see if there is any progression in the yeah, lesion. Previous, uh, ra previous radiograph one year before uh, was almost same. Almost same. So that suggests that it's a stable lesion, which is most, which is mo most likely a, a, a benign entity. So to inform the findings to the referring clinician, my, my possibility in that will be that of a, 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 a mediastinal lesion, probably benign mediastinal lesion, uh, most likely to be something like a, maybe a bronchogenic cyst or uh, uh, like a bronchogenic cyst or a, or, or a healed infective etiology. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so in my lateral view, I can also I can see that the lesion is located in the uh, upper upper lobe of the lungs. It looks more like in the lungs in the lateral projection. Um, uh, so in that case, um, the it is not it is located in, anterior to the trachea. So uh, since it is uh, going by the history, since it looks like a, since it's a, uh, since it, not, since no, it's stable. Uh, cons cons uh, consider that there was no previous film. Uh, it was the only one film. Okay. So in the that patient, case. Patient present, patient present with some cough and some. So in that case, I'll, look, uh, I'll consider the possibility of an infective etiology. I like to suggest uh, 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 an upper lower consolidation. Uh, suggest, uh, um, suggest the referring clinician for a CT scan for further characterization so, of the lesion. Uh, so, are you going with a mediastinal lesion or a lung lesion? In the lateral projection, it seems more like a lung lesion, which is in a, a, a abutting the mediastinum. 
So uh, uh, you are you are taking back your uh, statements from the frontal projection. Uh, yeah. A big, uh, one minute. I'll just refresh. I'll just rephrase myself. Because no, uh, no, I will not take back the statement from my uh, previous uh, uh, previous interpretation. I like to still consider the possibility of a mediastinal lesion. Uh, uh, so, uh, if it is a mediastinal lesion, in which uh, compartment of mediastinum? Anterior mediastinum. Okay. Now go on. Uh, if it is anterior mediastinal lesion, I'll think of the possibility of a lymphoma, thymoma, or a, a germ cell tumor. I like to go for a cross-sectional imaging for better characterization of the lesion and uh, suggest discussion of the chest MDT. Uh, so this is a 45-year-old okay. male. So, so uh, do you want to uh, uh, give a primary diagnosis? 45-year-old, uh, my primary diagnosis will be either a thymoma or a lymphoma. Mm. Okay. Okay, so going by the uh, actual CT scan contrast enhanced images, I can see a homogeneously. Okay. I can see a hom homogeneously enhancing lesion which is present in the anterior mediastinum and uh, abutting the arch of the aorta and impinging on the cardiac shadow. Uh, this looks, uh, the lesion looks, uh, there is no significant surrounding lymphadenopathy seen. But going with uh, the homogeneous pattern of enhancement, my primary definitions will be that of a lymphoma, along with the possibility of a thymoma going by the age of the patient. So in my usual practice, I like to suggest uh, image-guided sampling of the lesion for better characterization and uh, further staging. OK. Uh, I'm present a 85 year old male with chronic cough and shortness of breath. I'm provided with the frontal chest radiograph of a 85 year old male with chronic cough and shortness of breath. I can see bilateral interstitial reticular nodular opacity scattered in, in both the lungs, predominantly in the lower zones. So, going by the age of the patient and this presentation, I'm thinking of the possibility of a chronic fibrotic uh, pathology, uh, chronic changes, which may be in the form of fibrosis affecting predominantly lower lobes, uh, as in the case of an interstitial lung disease or uh, uh, chronic uh, <coughs> uh, uh, like, uh, um, interstitial lung disease, chronic bronch or chronic bronchitic changes, or, or uh, the, if there is a history, then I think of the possibility of drug-induced changes or scleroderma. So in my usual uh, no, practice, no, no drug, no, no drug, drug induced changes. And, okay. Uh, no, no sort of drug and no scleroderma. Okay, no scleroderma. So in that case, I'm thinking of the possibility of an interstitial lung disease primarily. So in my usual practice, I like to compare with the previous radiographs if available to check for the progression. And at the there same time- There is no previous radiograph available. Okay. Okay, so I like to go for the occupation history of the patient if available. And uh, in my, in, if the patient has a significant uh, occupation- can you, can, you, can you derive any occupational history from additional findings in the field? Okay, so I'm looking for the possibility of any calcified pleural plugs, which is not very obvious in this image. The background lungs show some emphysematous changes. So I'm thinking of the possibility of maybe a, a pneumoconiosis. Uh, I'd like to suggest a, a further evaluation with cross-sectional imaging and refer the case to the uh, pulmonologist and suggest a pulmonary function testing. And uh, depending on the chest radio uh, CT uh, picture, we'll go ahead with the management. Okay. There is one one opacity I can see in the left lower zone, uh, which hmm. looks like a plaque. So that may be okay. an indicative of an asbestos related condition. Yeah, patient was uh, patient was working in a uh, insulation in industry. Uh, okay. At thirty to fifty years of age. Okay, so that uh, goes in favor of asbestos-related lung disease. So that is still asbestos, I like. Uh, what what disease? There are different asbestos-related lung disease. Uh, asbestos-related, uh, like uh, basically uh, asbestos, like uh, asbestosis. Okay. So what will you do? 
I like to uh, confirm this on a CT scan of the chest and take it up from there. This shows bilateral subpleural reticular. Sorry, yeah, I can. Bilateral subpleural scrolling is a bit. Uh, okay, subpleural reticular changes with honeycombing pattern, which is characteristic of a UIP type of interstitial lung disease. So, uh, and there are some calcified pleural plaques as well, which I can see in my margin of the radula. So, these features are in favor of uh, interstitial lung disease with UIP pattern, probably induced by uh, occupation exposure. The patient needs a, a referral to the uh, pulmonologist uh, since this is a, a chronic condition. And, uh, and the, after discussion, the chest MDT can be followed up from there. Okay. Uh, am I okay? Shortness of breath, fifty year old female. Okay, I'm provided with the frontal chest radiograph, fifty year old female. Of female with shortness of breath, I can see there is a central line in C two with the tip at the cable atrial junction. So I think it is properly positioned. There is a large dilated uh, air fluid level seen in the right paravertebral region, which is contigo which is not obscuring the heart border. Uh, there's uh, some um, element of left lower lobe collapse also seen. So I like to correlate with the previous history of the patient if the patient has any surgical history. Uh, yeah, if the, the patient had yes, the patient had a previous surgery, you can see the surgical yeah. flips there. Okay, so in that case, I'm thinking of the possibility of a gastric pull-up with uh, uh, anastomosis. Okay. So is this? This is a 30-year-old uh, uh, coming with uh, uh, respiratory distress. Okay. Shortness of 30-year-old female patient. You can see an endotracheal tube and NG tube and a left-sided central line in C2. Um, there is a left breast shadow is not very uh, clearly seen. So, yeah, yeah, dis disregard that. Okay, so there are some opacities present in the right lung and the ribs appear to be uh, uh, you know, slightly ribbon shaped in nature yes. or, sp or spittle shaped and the background bony architecture looks a bit uh, unusual. And there are some amount of... Where, 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 where is the center line? I cannot see a center line. There is some tube going from the left uh, subclavian. Going uh, where? That is going towards the heart. I cannot see the terminal endpoint actually. So maybe it's overlying the patient. I'm not sure. Okay. okay, so going by the ribs, I'm thinking of the possibility of a condition of a development. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you mean this line? No, no, I didn't mean that line actually. I meant, I think that this is line? No, the one that is just left in the subclavian. Okay. Okay. There is an NG tube also that I told. Um, hmm. So the rib pattern suggests some underlying skeletal uh, deformity. Along with uh, there is a cardiomegaly element of cardiomegaly also, and patchopacitis yes, mm. in the right lung. So, mm. uh, going by all these features, I'm thinking of some developmental condition which has which has okay. the cardiac element along with the skeletal deformity. Yes. So maybe an Ellis van Creveur syndrome, uh, or like some developmental condition. Other than I suggest an echocardiography for the okay. patient. Okay, okay, you are suspecting some skeletal dysplasia, that's okay. Yeah, so I'd like okay. to cor correlate with the previous images if available, suggest a full skeletal survey of the patient. And see yeah, he has, he has a history of mucopolysaccharidosis. Mucopolysaccharidosis, okay, so okay. that explains the skeletal okay. condition. And since there is okay. cardi uh, cardiac enlargement, I'll suggest echocardiography also. Okay. Uh, what about the additional lung findings? The additional lung findings may be due to an infective etiology or maybe because of the cardiac condition, there may be some uh, regurgitation uh, which has uh, resulted in uh, uh, right upper lobe uh, patchy opacities. Okay. 
So uh, if there is a patient is having fever, uh, suspect the possibility of an infectious etiology and suggest uh, uh, a cover of antibiotics and a follow-up chest radiograph after four to six weeks. And if there's no fever, then I like to go for a, a CT examination for better characterization of the pathology and take it up at the chest MDT. Okay. Lifelong smoker, chronic cough and shortness, COPD exacerbation, 70-year-old male. <laughs> 2017 x-ray shows bilateral emphysematous lungs with flattening of both domes of the diaphragm. The parahyalar shadows appear to be slightly prominent. So this picture is in favor of COPD. I'm not seeing any particular pathology in this picture. In addition to that, there is some haziness in the left lower zone, but it looks more like reticular changes. So in my usual practice, I like to uh, ah, there is some bilateral paravertebral swelling I can see in the uh, towards the lower margin of the film, which is centrally placed. So, I'd like to go for further imaging and for can better. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Hello. Uh, just to let you know, fifteen minutes. Okay. 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 So I'm thinking okay. of uh, paravertebral so, swelling and. Yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, stop here. Uh, we'll okay, give sure, this film sure. to. The, uh, next sure. candidate. Sure, sure. So, uh, how did you how how did you do? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure actually, to be honest. Okay, so th this is the last film. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, usually this will be a last film, like when you are going very well mm -hmm. in the viva, uh, mm -hmm. they may give you a very difficult film. Mm -hmm. So uh, they will not give you uh, as a first film or when you are mm -hmm. uh, struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you get such a film, uh, like you have to understand that you are doing well. That's why okay. they are going to test you with a difficult film. Okay. So okay. when you get a difficult film like this, uh, they are not expecting you to arrive at a diagnosis. Uh, mm -hmm. They are uh, just checking you, checking your uh, approach, how you are approaching it. So okay. uh, don't get embarrassed, just uh, go systematically. So mm -hmm. first and foremost, you have to tell about all the lines that you mm -hmm. did well, like there is an endotracheal mm -hmm. tube. The position mm. is correct, and there is a nasal gas tube that is going, and mm. there's a central line. Yeah, I and was talking about is, that line actually, the one yeah, that we yeah. just marked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, and the tip uh, was uh, I I can't see the tip. Yeah, yeah. Ah, you also called it correct. See. <laughs> yeah, and that was not at the ideal position. And mm. there is another line that is okay, going that I like did this not see. from okay. that's coming from the neck, and that is going down below. Oh, uh, that is okay. a VP shunt. Uh, VP shunt, correct, correct. Yeah, okay, so, okay. Hmm. Uh, so at, at this at that time you can understand that there is something going on in the head, mm -hmm. and there is a, a as you told the ribs are very spatula like uh, mm -hmm. flattened, and that is there is some underlying um, mm. skeletal disorder, and that is mm. uh, associated with the cardiomegaly, some heart mm -hmm. heart heart disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, the left lung is almost okay, but the right lung, there is yes. uh, diffuse ground glass opacity or uh, air space opacity. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, it is seen with uh, unilateral pulmonary edema that usually goes with the mitral regurgitation. You can see that the yes. uh, there is mm -hmm. uh, the carina, carina is wider mm -hmm. and there is some uh, straightening of the left heart border and the left atal appendage is also enlarged. Yes. So uh, mostly that is due to left mitral regurgitation causing unilateral pulmonary edema. So there are multiple diagnoses in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have diagnosed a cardiac disease. You have diagnosed a skeletal dysplasia. You have mm -hmm. diagnosed a unilateral uh, uh, lung abnormality, maybe due to infection, mm -hmm. maybe due to uh, regurgitation. Mm -hmm. But uh, you told uh, aspiration, not cardiac regurgitation, right? No, I told cardiac regurgitation. Cardiac regurgitation. Mike, okay. Mike, Mike, I all the points you uh, okay. you found oh. out, and that was a very good uh, discussion. And <clears throat> regarding <clears throat> regarding shortness of breath in a fifty-year-old female, uh, this also uh, you mm. instead of asking whether there is a uh, history of surgery, you have to find out mm. the surgical clips mm. here, mm -hmm. and you mm. have to tell that there are surgical clips in the medias channel. Right, with right. A, uh, dilated tubular elongated mm. uh, lesion in the right pericardiac region and with the fluid mm. level. Uh, mm. So I am thinking the possibility of a uh, 
uh, esophagectomy or esophageal surgery with a gastric pull up or an Ivor mm-hmm. Lewis procedure okay. so i don't ask direct question like is there a surgery so you have okay. to uh, find out the inferences from the film correct, itself correct correct Okay. so that will reduce your point uh, so if mm-hmm. you have found out the surgical flips yourself and found, uh, found that answer you will be getting a 8 otherwise you will mm-hmm. be getting a 6 point okay okay and you okay. also uh, told about the center line first so mm-hmm. that is a good approach always start with the lines and tubes okay. so that you will not forget it okay 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 and then uh, it's an 85 year old male with chronic cough and shortness of breath Uh, here uh, the age is an 85 year old uh, mm-hmm. with the uh, uip pattern like uh, you can mm-hmm. see that there are uh, you are told everything correctly like uh, mm-hmm. basal predominant uh, reticular shadows and there is fibrosis there is volume loss in the lungs some obs- um, there is fussy cardiac margin left cardiac margin the left heart borders mm-hmm. the left diaphragmatic borders everything is shaggy and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you miss this uh, plural plaque and uh, mm-hmm. only after Uh, prompting you could find a find yes, a solution yes. so mm-hmm. that itself uh, was uh, uh, actually defining the film like it's yes, an asbestos yeah. related pleural disease yes. then uh, you have to tell like uh, it's an asbestosis mm-hmm. and ct uh, was very typical of a uip pattern with uh, honey mm-hmm. being with reticular shadows so i just have one, one one doubt can i ask you so mm-hmm. you you asked me you know like what kind of disease so uh, after i said asbestos so am i supposed to say asbestosis or like what is the correct asbestosis asbestosis so this asbestos. patient okay. uh, needs uh, patient is entitled for a common session from okay. the government from occupational health department so okay. uh, this patient was i told you that he was working in an insulation industry from 30 so, years so when, when when should i say asbestos related instead of asbestosis is there a demarcation like when should i use the other term instead of asbestosis yeah uh, asbestos like... actually there are multiple disorders uh, like it mm-hmm. can be benign uh, like benign or malignant yes, in the yes. benign it can be plural or it can be pulmonary in Pal- the benign pulmonary. plural it starts with plural effusion then it okay. starts with the plural plaques then it starts mm. with the pl- calcified plural plaques so these are mm. the asbestos related plural disease in which the lung okay. will be normal so okay, these patients okay. are not entitled for any uh, common session Compass. because they will okay. be mostly mostly asymptomatic and okay. uh, they and uh, that is not pre malignant also sometimes mm-hmm. they can uh, present with uh, mesothelioma uh, no. mesothelioma but that is very rare uh, so coming to the mm. benign uh, pulmonary Hello. lesions these are yeah. the okay. uh, mm-hmm. uip pattern or any interstitial lung disease then okay. fibrosis lung fibrosis and all that uh, that is the asbestosis then then that becomes the asbestosis and that patients are uh, entitled for the occupational health department common session and all okay. and there is another uh, benign pulmonary uh, finding like uh, round atelectasis that can yes, uh, yes. that can form uh, in relation to the pul- uh, plural plex then okay. the malignant lesion like uh, it can be plural malignancy or a pulmonary malignancy plural malignancy mm-hmm. as you told it is uh, plural mesothelioma it can be peritoneal yes. mesothelioma also and yeah. uh, in the lung it coming to before uh, uh, lung it can be bronchogenic carcinoma mm. uh, is also associated with asbestos uh, asbestos related diseases okay. so okay. Uh, okay. you have to be clear what asbestos related disease it is okay okay and this one um, actually it's a opening film so opening films mm-hmm. are always very simple so mm-hmm. you took around more than 4 minutes <laughs> or maybe 4 hours yes, yes. for this uh, uh, and uh, actually you are going uh, in one direction you are coming back and you are going another direction and again mm-hmm. again coming back so mm-hmm. when you start describing about a lesion when it is obvious mm-hmm. you finish mm-hmm. describing that lesion so mm-hmm. you uh, told that there is some mediastinal lesion and then you went away with the lung mm-hmm. went away with mm-hmm. other actually in the sorts. in the lateral i was a bit con- actually can you just tell me lateral you have i have i have given you the mm-hmm. lateral first mm-hmm. i have given yes, you the yes yes i know i know so in mm-hmm. our usual practice we'll be given uh, in, in your usual practice you will be getting the frontal and the lateral together and you will be uh, mm-hmm. comparing both and arriving at a diagnosis but in exam in real exam what mm-hmm. happens is they will not give you the uh, lateral film correct, and correct. Uh, they uh, in a, uh, so a mediastinal lesion is very simple it's mm-hmm. uh, uh, it is identification localization differential diagnosis management so mm-hmm. everything should be finished within 2 minutes so mm-hmm. uh, don't take more than that so mm-hmm. uh, you have to identify and localize the mediastinal lesion in the frontal chest radiograph itself whether it is mm-hmm. anterior or middle or superior or posterior mm-hmm. 
So here mm-hmm. actually there is a very well defined lateral margins, mm-hmm. inferior margin, and the superior margin is actually is not clear. When it is going mm-hmm. above the uh, clavicle, it is not clear because there is no length outline in that lesion. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. is not in the posterior mediastinum. It Correct. is in the anterior mediastinum because the lengths uh, uh, there won't be any length outline in that in the anterior mediastinum because uh, you know the structure of the anterior mediastinum. Yes. So you can see the uh, cardiac knuckle, uh, aortic knuckle here very clearly, and the uh, mm-hmm. hilar vessels are also seen. So this is hmm. an anterior mediastinal lesion. So okay. once you diagnose an anterior mediastinal lesion in a middle-aged or above middle-aged uh, uh, patient, then you just directly go for the uh, uh, differentials. You just say that there are no mm-hmm. classification. So I am thinking the possibility of a thymoma or lymphoma, but hmm. uh, the, this teratoma is unlikely. And hmm. then you have to uh, uh, tell like I will compare the previous film. I will uh, refer to the chest MDT and hmm. arrange for a, a CT chest to find out hmm. uh, and narrate hmm. hmm. a diagnosis. And um, so like that, you have to finish it faster within two minutes. Okay. Uh, so in a mediastinal lesion. So this hmm. actually uh, you struggled a bit. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay. I'll mute. Okay. I'll mute myself. Then I'll mute myself. Okay. So I just have to find out. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sayan. Uh, Dr. Asad would be next. Thank you. Thank you. So what was the last case we saw? Oh, yeah. Okay. You were discussing one case. Okay. So who is next? Uh, Dr. Asad. Uh, uh, hi, I... Dr. Asad. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, Asad. Uh, you can. Uh, Sabat, uh, are you keeping the time? Yes, I'm starting. Uh, your time starts now, Dr. Asad. So uh, this is you are mind. recording also, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, 70-year-old male, lifelong smoker, chronic cough and shortness of breath, COPD exacerbation, fury. Okay. So uh, this is the frontal chest radiograph of an adult patient, 70-year-old male with known COPD. It can identify uh, uh, there uh, is the lungs are hyperinflated and uh, uh, consistent with findings of uh, COPD, and uh, I can't identify the uh, CP angles, which uh, at the end of the films are not mm. properly visualized. Otherwise, uh, I'm looking for any yeah, obvious. Are, these are the CP angles. Yeah, the CP ones. angles uh, I can see uh, on these are showing some uh, pleural thickening, mm. and. Uh, I'm going through the lungs to look for any focal lung collapse or consolidation, which I can't hmm. see. Hmm. And uh, in the right high lung, I can see there is a an opacity, which is uh, yes. uh, seen in the right high lung. It is yeah, okay. ill-defined and it is causing obscuration. You, of... your, your, what is your name, Awad? Sorry? Your name? Asad. Asad, okay. Yes. ASAD. ASAD, yes. Okay. Can you show me that? This one over here. You can click uh, and show. Sorry? You can click the film and show. Okay, okay. Correct, okay. So, uh, but I can see the hilum uh, through this opacity, so it it yeah. likes it uh, appears that it is uh, yeah. overlying a deep shadow. I'm okay. going to the bones. Uh, I can yeah yeah. There is a hilar. Uh, uh, there is a, what, what you tell? What, what is that? Sorry. Uh, what did you? What is your inference about that lesion? So, uh, so uh, I think this is uh, likely to be a hilar mass, or okay. uh, uh, it could be related to uh, a hilar tumor or middle mediastinal okay. uh, mass. So, further evaluation okay. with CT would, or cross-sectional imaging, uh, would be appropriate. And after correlation with the previous 
chest x-rays and okay. other. So this is a previous chest x-ray. One year back. So one year back, I I don't find there is any opacity in this chest x-ray or in correlation hmm. with the recent film. So uh, I would further uh, advise it uh, cross-sectional imaging for this patient to Why? note uh, Why? High, high low Why? mass. High low mass. What are you, what are you thinking? Uh, what, what is your primary diagnosis? Uh, it it can be a hilar based tumor or okay. it can be a lymph node enlargement. Uh, okay. So, one second, I'll give you a remote control. You can uh, click here or above or downwards. So this is the contrast enhanced CT chest examination. Hmm. Uh, you can see there are bilateral hilar lymph node enlargement, hmm. and uh, I'm just struggling with this mouse basically. Hmm. So uh, these are uh, so basically these are hilar lymph nodes which are enlarged. Hmm. I'm for any other lymph nodes in the mediastinum. I don't hmm. find any evidence of any other significant hmm. lymph nodes. Uh, there are some paratracheal lymph nodes on the right hmm. side, as I hmm. can identify, which are uh, enlarged hmm. as well. Hmm. So, I'm, so uh, I am looking for any VS mass. So no axillary lymphadenopathy, hmm. and uh, I'm going coming down now again. Sorry. Sorry, uh, I'm just struggling with this mouse. So. Uh, So major, I would like to uh, correlate uh, in the lung windows to look for any. Okay. Uh, Is there an additional finding in this mediastinal window? Uh, in the mediastinal window, I can see there are uh, lymph nodes in the right hilum and uh, trachea and major bronchi appear normal. I don't find any okay. other mediastinal nodes or no okay. evidence of pleural. Uh, okay, I'll give you the lung window. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in the lung windows, uh, you can click and control. Okay. So yeah, so in the lung windows, I can see there is an PST uh, in the right upper upper lung, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, appears. Uh, Part which shows some speculation. So uh, it mm. can be a new, uh, I'm suspecting uh, a possible lung tumor with associated mm. uh, uh, lymphadenopathy as described. So no pleural effusion and major take and major bronchi appear normal. Mm. And uh, I don't find any other evidence of uh, interstitial lung disease. There are mm. minor changes of bronchitis uh, so uh, so to conclude my finding uh, this uh, this uh, this is likely to be a, a, a lung tumor associated mm. uh, uh, lymph nodes in the right hilum so i mm. will uh, urgently communicate my findings in my usual practice to the two week mm. two weeks wait team and mm. uh, inform the referring clinician and mm. uh, lung mdt discussion is uh, suggested. Okay. So this patient uh, came to the chest OP for uh, follow-up. He's a middle-aged female. So chest radiograph, adult patient, frontal uh, view, uh, 
I can see there is evidence of previous uh, truck or two and mm. uh, the heart size appears uh, mildly enlarged. However, I would like to uh, measure it in my uh, usual practice. Mm, that was and, normal. Mm. Okay, so uh, I can identify there are uh, some metallic clips uh, which are seen on either side uh, of mm. the lungs. Uh, mm. So these might be related to uh, previous uh, um, surgical intervention or so I would like mm. to correlate with the history available and there mm. I, uh, I in addition to that I can see there are a few nodules in in the right mm. uh, in the right load zone mm. uh, and which appear suspicious to me so mm. uh, so first, uh, I, I don't find any evidence of uh, plural fusion on either side. There is some hmm. uh, plural thickening uh, on the left side. And hmm. uh, trachea is normal. I don't find any <coughs> hyaluridinopathy. And rest of the visualized lungs uh, look clear. I don't find any obvious uh, bony abnormality. Uh, looking through the heart, uh, I don't find any retrocardic abnormality. So, uh, are you sure? Uh, uh, for the uh, look, I can see there is an opacity possible, possibly in the right uh, retrocardic region as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so to conclude my findings, there are few uh, uh, possible nodules in the right lung one mm. uh, in the lower low lung zone and also in the retrocardic region. So uh, mm. to take it further, I would uh, like to go ahead with uh, cross-sectional imaging of the chest. Uh, so, to what's, your primary, what's your primary inference and diagnosis before going to the CT? Uh, so th these, Why the patient these needs can a be... CT? Because patient is uh, currently not symptomatic. Now it just came for follow-up in a chest uh, OP. Okay. So, um, Why do you my... need a CT scan? So uh, since these uh, regions uh, look suspicious for uh, primary, uh, maybe uh, possibly metastatic uh, uh, deposits, or uh, so that that's the only thing. Patient is not a known case of malignancy. If it is not a known case of malignancy, uh, but uh, uh, even then, first I would like to compare with the previous film. Uh, uh, and see if these opacities were there. Uh, unfortunately, the previous films were not available. So, uh, so in that case, I would like to uh, basically rule out any sinister findings and uh, still would like to go for uh, cross-sectional imaging uh, to, for, uh, to take it further. So this is the frontal chest radiograph of an adult patient. Uh, I can see the lungs uh, are showing uh, diffuse uh, uh, diffuse uh, uh, interstitial uh, thickening, or uh, uh, I would say. Uh, diffuse changes of bronchiectasis with uh, uh, with ring-like opacities and uh, term-like uh, shadowing. And I can see evidence of dextrocardia. And uh, 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 otherwise, I don't find any evidence of focal lung collapse or consolidation on either side. And uh, the lungs appear a bit uh, hyperinflated. So uh, no uh, obvious pleural fusion no mm -hmm. hyalur mass mm -hmm. on either side, trachea appear central, and uh, no evidence of pneumothorax or pneumomediastum, and mm -hmm. the visualized uh, bones appear normal. So uh, uh, to uh, with these appearances, my top differential would be uh, a cartaginal syndrome with mm -hmm. dextrocardia and uh, uh, underlying bronchiectasis. So I would, uh, would like to discuss uh, uh, with the clinical uh, details available and a comparison mm. with the previous films, okay. first of all, and take it for the as cross-sectional uh, chest imaging to confirm my mm. findings. 
okay so this is a 70 year old male uh, coming with some um, lethargy so 70 year old male uh, with lethargy <clears throat> uh, frontal uh, chest radiograph uh, the striking finding i can identify uh, is uh, in the right pericardial region uh, mm. there is uh, ill defined uh, opacity uh, yeah that's a uh, uh, disregard that that is vascular shadow all right so uh, so uh, i am looking for uh, and the other thing i can see there is an uh, increased translucency of left hemithorax mm. uh, And that is due to rotation that is due to rotation so um uh, i the heart size appears normal i don't find any evidence of uh, hyaluronic acid nephropathy and uh, uh, i can see there is a bit uh, 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 the bones are a bit uh, showing increase uh, sclerosis uh, mm -hmm. so uh, that looks uh, a bit uh, suspicious Uh, mm. to me and mm. uh, otherwise uh, uh, at the edge of the fins i can probably identify uh, humeral head sclerosis uh, possibly mm. on the left side uh, mm. and uh, so on further review of the spine i can see uh, a h shaped uh, vertebrae and uh, so uh, to t to uh, to i mean yeah so uh, on uh, these uh, findings are confirmed on the lateral uh, fin uh, so uh, my uh, 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 to conclude uh, these appearances may include uh, sickle cell disease uh, uh, so uh, i would li like to correlate uh, with the previous uh, fins and, uh, do, you, do you remember what uh, do, do you remember the history what i told uh, a lethargy what is age so uh, uh, 70 year so you are still going with the same diagnosis or uh, so uh, the other thing uh, is uh, i i would like uh, i mean uh, the uh, is increased sclerosis and uh, these appearances my top differential would be uh, sclerotic metastatic disease and mm. uh, prostatic uh, the prostate uh, would uh, would be uh, needs to be uh, one of the primary Uh, which mm. causes these appearances and uh, mm. to take this further i would uh, uh, inform the referring clinician mm. uh, appropriate for the uh, i can include uh, ct chest abdominal evaluation and also mri mm. of the prostate that is an age 15 and minutes neurological team to you okay 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 so uh, um, you are uh, are you forward your name uh, sabad asad Asad, Asad, uh, Asad. Uh, you are from Pakistan? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay, okay. Nice to meet you, Asad. Uh, and uh, uh, how did you do? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, frankly, how many uh, cases you have seen? I think uh, four or four, five. Okay. okay. So uh, this case, uh, you forgot the history that I gave you in the beginning. So. Right. Right. Uh, um, uh, foremost finding is we should not make up any uh, findings uh, like uh, there was no head shaped vertebra like i gave you the lateral view uh, to see the end plates the end plates were was very uh, straight so you have right. to uh, right. take back that uh, you have to apologize and take back that uh, statement like i am okay. retracting okay. the statement of head shaped vertebra mm -hmm. and uh, um, so don't diagnose sickle cell disease in a 70 year old uh, male yeah that's so, right so uh, 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 you should be uh, then only uh, you came to the realization that sclerotic metastasis should be at the top list so uh, the, uh, otherwise it was uh, okay with prompting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this one uh, is a uh, actually it will be given as a first film uh, you have to hit it for a six uh, like uh, you should you, you did not tell about the gastric uh, frontal gas shadow on the right side so otherwise uh, it is a, there was an extra cardiac um, tubular bronchiectasis um, yeah. uh, um, 
ring shadows uh, everything was fine when you have to uh, ask whether this i i'll also check whether this patient has any sinusitis any um any is a male yeah. any infertility okay. and all so i'll uh, go so male then, infertility then you, yeah. Then you, yeah then you will get the paranasal sinus x ray then you will get the ct and all okay. so you okay. uh, you have to uh, go with that discussion thank you and uh, but you took uh, a more than a bit more time for this so don't take much time for such an x ray because they are on minutes so on minutes uh, just finish with uh, uh, fast uh, don't tell about negative Uh, unnecessary negative findings mm -hmm. so this one uh, there is a median sternotomy uh, wire in situ mm -hmm. and uh, you told that retrocardic uh, the shed area was okay but there is a uh, valve here uh, sitting here so that is an aortic valve and okay. uh, there are multiple uh, coils uh, in the radiograph so it's a story film so you have to find pick up out, pick up uh, multiple findings and you have to build up a story and there will be only one diagnosis so there are multiple nodules in the right lower zone uh, and mm -hmm. there, are, there are some tubular tubular or shadows also connecting to the nodules suggesting that they are pulmonary HST, uh, arterial yeah. venous mal malformations and uh, and with that you are seeing multiple coil uh, coil embolizations previous yeah. uh, coil embolizations yeah. of the avm so uh, you are thinking the possibility of a uh, multiple pulmonary arterial venous malformations causing some syndromes so you have to tell the syndrome name name like hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia and you will compare with the previous films uh, so this patient I came i uh, uh, missed this one basically yeah it's a story film so yeah. you have to pick up all these findings and arrive at a uh, final diagnosis and that will be only one diagnosis no differentials for this yeah. and uh, yeah. this i told you uh, separate uh, uh, again that the patient came for a routine follow up in the routine chest follow up yeah. then again you are saying like i will do for, do a ct chest uh, the examiner told you like ct chest is not needed so don't uh, refute his statement uh, like yeah, never you, you 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 argued with me and overrided my, myself overrided or rided the examiner and you told that you will again go and go with that ct chest so that will uh, uh, give you uh, negative marks like uh, don't argue like that yeah. okay okay mm -hmm. so this is the first case uh, 70 year old male uh, you uh, spotted the finding very very well because there is a convex border usually the uh, hilum will be like concave so yeah. the the concavity is lost and there is a bulge here so yeah. uh, you correctly told that you will compare the previous film there is also a, a opacity here uh, in the uh, yeah. right paracardiac region so uh, um, i already told that it's a copd patient so you just say that uh, the clinical history of copd uh, uh, is uh, evident in the film so don't um, go on with uh, describing the copd so in okay. usually the copd patients you will not see uh, the entire chest film in a one film because yeah. it's a elongated hyperinflated mm -hmm. so that is usually normal you, you will miss that uh, cp angle and all usually okay. so you ask for that and i i, show, I showed you the cp angle that's the, okay mm -hmm. and you told that you will compare the previous film and uh, found out that there was no lesion in the previous yeah. 2000 one year one year before the film and there was no lesion here also Yeah. so in in one year uh, you have to definitely think about uh, a malignancy uh, yeah. especially he is a smoker uh, and the history itself the smoking history was given and in the uh, mediastinal window you fail to identify this lesion you are keeping on uh, describing about uh, mediastinal lesion that is fine okay but you finally identified that lesion in the uh, uh, lung, lung window. window you asked for a lung window that's uh, good and uh, you have to tell that i'll compare with the bone window uh, also Yeah. and rest of rest of the findings were okay fine yeah thank you thank you so much dr sunish yeah. nice meeting you uh, uh, yeah yeah my pleasure thank you thank you dr asif um next would be dr vijaya uh, hi dr vijaya Hi, Doctor Sanij. Uh, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> how are you? Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. And uh, uh, you can uh, start. Sabat, are you keeping the time? Yes, I am. This your time starts now. Okay. This is a 12-year-old male. 
I'm provided with a frontal uh, chest radiograph. And um, so in the first look, I'm not seeing any obvious abnormalities. So I'll be uh, looking at the review areas. Mm. Uh, first of all, I'll be, uh, I'm looking at the apices, mm. which, uh, which are appearing normal. Mm. Then uh, the cardiac contour and the retrocardiac region is normal. Mm. And both hyla are appearing normal. Mm. Though the right hyla is appearing a bit prominent, but um, I think it could be due to rotation. Yeah, disregard, disregard that. Okay. Mm. So uh, I'll go back to looking at the review areas. Mm. And uh, yes, I'm seeing uh, some uh, rib notching uh, mm. along the inferior border of the uh, mm. ribs on. Okay. Uh, on both sides. Hmm. Yes, uh, on both sides I'm seeing inferior rib notching. Hmm. So with the uh, so with the um, obtained finding, I'll be thinking about uh, okay. Conditions like uh, coactation of aorta. Hmm. So I'll be looking at the clinical uh, details of the patient to look for any uh, uh, any previous uh, history, a significant uh, medical history. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so. Uh, okay. This is a 30-year-old female coming with the shortness of breath. 30-year-old, um, uh, I, I didn't hear you properly. 30-year-old female. 30-year-old female with the shortness of breath. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm provided with a frontal chest radiograph of an adult. Uh, there are mm. prominent... Okay, I'm uh, first of all, I'm seeing... Uh, catheter overlying the cardiac shadow uh, i think yeah, that was actually she had a she had a, a pleural tap uh, means okay, okay. Uh, pleural, pleural drainage in situ pleural tube in situ okay okay and um, so uh, the most obvious finding is uh, prominent reticular shadows involving mm -hmm. bilateral lung fields which mm -hmm. are more obvious in the basal lungs Hmm. Um, and the volume of the lungs are preserved hmm. and the bilateral uh, costophrenic angles are obliterated suggestive hmm. of uh, mild effusion hmm. uh, or it can uh, it could be even uh, due to pleural thickening hmm. So, so uh, now uh, the chest X-ray is uh, showing an uh, uh, appearance of uh, interstitial lung disease of UIP pattern. So I'm looking at uh, any um, dilatation of the esophagus or any cutaneous calcifications to yeah. suggest uh, scleroderma and all. Uh, you which told, I'm not seeing uh, you any. told uh, what what you told about the volume of the lung. Um, you were telling something lung, about the volume of the lung. I said volume of the lung appear preserved, and there is no. So what will you see in a UAP? Uh, yeah, there will be significant volume loss in later stages. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. So, do you want to uh, continue the statement uh, and the diagnosis? Okay. okay, since the volume of the lung is preserved, uh, the mm -hmm. UIP is less likely. So I would like to uh, retract my statement. Hmm. Um, so this basically, uh, I think this is an interstitial lung disease, hmm. um, which could be uh, due to 
And yes, the left uh, uh, breast shadow is appearing a bit. Yeah, yeah, ignore that, uh, ignore that, ignore that. Apart from UAP, do you have any other DDs? Uh, hi, Vijay, you are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Dr. Vijay, we can't hear you. She's still with us, but we can't hear her. Uh, you can pause the timer. Hello? Yes, I have paused the timer. I'm pausing the recording as well. Okay, um, so so I'm thinking about interstitial lung disease and um, I would like to uh, uh, look at any previous x-rays if available for comparison. And yeah, also I'd like to look at looking, the- Looking the same, one year before it was looking the same. Okay, so um, so I, I, I think uh, and this an uh, this uh, basically an interstitial lung disease and the uh, yeah. etiology here I'm not sure. So so if you are stuck with the film, either you can. Uh, uh, sacrifice it and go on or otherwise you will be spending a lot of time okay. wasting a lot of time so you can uh, decide what you can do yeah i would like to go on okay. <laughs> next film yeah okay a okay, febrile okay. patient 45 year old male Provided with a frontal uh, just radiograph of an adult uh, who's febrile. Sorry, uh, you just start with a lateral radiograph. Okay. Okay, the lateral um, just radiograph uh, shows uh, triangular opacity uh, anteriorly overlapping the cardiac shadow. Hmm. And the anterior uh, diaphragm is also uh, seen obscured hmm. uh, by this opacity. Hmm. So uh, this is uh, so. Other than that, the retrosternal uh, lucency is normal, and the vertebrae hmm. are appearing normal. Hmm. And the uh, uh, left hemidiaphragm is uh, clearly seen except in the region of the heart and the right hemidiaphragm is seen uh, till the opacity so with the uh, provided image i think uh, this is a case of uh, right uh, middle lobe consolidation uh, so in a febrile patient uh, uh, i would like to have a look at the frontal radiograph also so uh, this confirms uh, finding in the lateral radiograph. Uh, and one additional thing I would like to tell you is that there is some volume loss in the right hemithorax. So there is a uh, collapse along with the consolidation. So, um, so, uh, so uh, is there any differential? Actually, the, uh, the septic focus was uh, in the patient's uh, lower limb. Uh, it was not in the lung. Okay. Later it was found out, and patient has uh, does not have any symptoms, and does not have any pulmonary symptoms. Okay. Okay, then this could be uh, a pericardial. Pericardial. Uh, cyst or a prominent fat pad okay. uh, since the patient is asymptomatic. Okay. Okay. 
chronic dyspnea in a 50 year old male okay uh, uh, the frontal chest radiograph uh, showing um, both hemithorax appear very uh, dense dense densely opacified with uh, some uh, small air, uh, some air lucencies here and there Mm. And uh, I'm not able to make out any uh, other structures in the thorax, uh, which are all obscured by this. Mm. So, uh, is that a case of uh, pulmonary alveolar microdiasis or? Um, okay. So, uh, or is it uh, an ossifying condition of the lungs? I'm not able to remember the name. So, what will you do? So, I'd like to compare with any previous radiographs if available, and also would mm -hmm. like to look at the medical history. The previous radiograph is one year back, was the same. Okay. So this is uh, pulmonary ossification or uh, yes, I'm provided with the axial CT. You can scroll. Okay. I'm provided with axial CT images in the lung window, which hmm. shows uh, Ignore the cystic changes. Okay. Um, both uh, lungs are showing um, reticular, uh, sorry, interstitial as well as the alveolar pattern, which is uh, very hyper dense. I would like to have a look at the mediastinal window as well as, as well. You can you can take the mediastinal window. Okay. So the post contra uh, post contrast images show. Uh, hyperdense areas in both lungs so uh, i'll be comparing with the plain images also uh, mm -hmm. to confirm that uh, these are uh, dense calcification uh, slash ossification mm -hmm. so uh, with the plain for plain to confirm this uh, uh, not uh, really do you, do, you, do you want to give another radiation for the patient uh, no, because uh, X-ray was also showing hyperdense areas. I'll I take it for uh, granted that this is uh, having calcific or ossific density. Hmm. So uh, this is a case of pulmonary ossification or osseous metaplasia of lungs. Okay, what will you do? So the, uh, the, since the patient is already a chronic patient uh, on follow-up, the case, uh, if he is having uh, pulmonary symptoms, uh, I'll be discussing the case in pulmonary MDG and manage accordingly. Okay. Shortness of breath in a 50-year-old smoker. Okay. The frontal chest radiograph shows... Uh, um, ground glass opacity involving the left hemithorax with uh, obscuration of left cardiac border, mm -hmm. and there is uh, left, uh, I mean, aortic knuckle is delineated by a hallucency. Uh, so, this is a case of left upper lobe collapse with um, a left facial sign. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not able to make out any obvious ma mass lesions or any intraluminal uh, mass in the left bronchus. Hmm. So, um, uh, uh, and there is also another finding is the left hemidiaphragm appear elevated, indicating volume loss. There is minimal effusion on the right side since the right yeah, cosmetonic uh, angle. Uh, okay. So, to proceed with this, uh, I would like to have proceed uh, do the CT, uh, CT thorax, plane and contrast hmm. for this patient to look for hmm. the cause of collapse.
so i'm provided with uh, ct axial images in lung window okay. 15 minutes are up dr sing okay let her finish it okay um sure. there is a left uh upper lobe uh, collapse hmm. and together with that i'm i will uh, seeing uh, the convex border so i would like to have a look at the mediastinal window so you can take the mediastinal window okay and also there is an okay the mediastinal window shows a large fluid level air fluid level in a cavity within the collapsed lung and uh, there is associated pleural effusion also so i'm looking at the hilum for any obstructing mass lesions uh, which i'm not seeing uh, i'm not seeing any obvious mass lesion and also okay. I, i i could see the air bronchogram through the collapse segment so this is a case of consolidation collapse of left upper lobe with a large okay. uh, necrotic area so this is a cavity thing uh, necrotizing pneumonia uh, so uh, this is not febrile okay and, and then i would uh, like to ask for any history of intervention because there's an air fluid okay, level stop here because the time is up okay so okay uh, how did you do uh, it's not at all great okay <laughs> so, so so this is actually uh, will be a, a starter film uh, in your uh, examination but you got it uh, at the last uh, so uh, don't use the term ground glass opacity in a radiograph uh, because yeah. usually you reserve it for ct Uh, it's a veil like opacity in the left mm -hmm. hemithorax and you can see the lustitial sign you correctly told so uh, i i told you that it's a 50 year old smoker so you have to repeat that history and uh, in a 50 year old smoker uh, we have to think the possibility of a any uh, malignant lesion uh, causing compression or any obstruction of the left upper lobe bronchus and causing collapse so this patient uh, you will compare the previous film to see whether it is an acute or chronic and will arrange an uh, inform the referring clinician and uh, refer to the chest mdt and arrange for a chest uh, abdomen and pelvis radiograph uh, ct so usually they do contrast no no not plain and contrast you told you will you do a plain and contrast ct so usually uh, they uh, avoid the plain um, no always they, they they are not doing the plain scan because okay. most of the findings you can ar uh, arrive at a contrast scan itself Yeah. <clears throat> so it's a uh, you can see there is a mass here and there is a necrotic mass here and that is causing compression of the left upper lobe and that is causing collapse and there is a uh, insisted uh, effusion uh, here also some changes on the uh, opposite lung so you you have to look at the lung window for any nodules and you you will tell that you will look at the bone window for any bone lesion and uh, so that was a uh, malignant lesion causing obstruction and uh, collapse Uh, so uh, uh, I, i did not give you any history of fever or any uh, pneumonia like symptoms so uh, if you are telling a, a diagnosis of pneumonia then you have to tell like if this patient is febrile then i will think the possibility of then they will correct you oh, okay. don't uh, arrive at uh, it's uh, tell like that so uh, that was this uh, but uh, we'll see the previous case Uh, it is a 50 year old male with chronic dyspnea so uh, this is a, actually the, there are storm sandstorm like uh, increased density uh, diffuse increased density bilaterally with some uh, black uh, black pleura sign uh, some black mediastinal sign and all and uh, that's a pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis so here you can see it's diffusely dense uh, and you can see this uh, ossification and all so that is a case of uh, uh, pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis i think yeah so just tell the diagnosis and refer to the chest physician okay uh, but you were uh, you told the pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis during the x-ray 
uh, description but uh, uh, but then you lost that uh, diagnosis and you were struggling with getting that diagnosis so here uh, if it is a um, right uh, middle lobe collapse then it will reach the hilum so it was not reaching the hilum it will be extending yeah. from the hilum like this that, that is a typical right middle lobe collapse so this is not a right middle lobe collapse it's actually a, a epicardial fat pad so so you uh, diagnose it later uh, that is an epicardial fat pad okay and uh, this one uh, this patient had a previous uh, pleural uh, uh, in uh, means drainage for the pneumothorax so you uh, started it correctly like it's a reticular shadows diffusely uh, in the basal mid and uh, zones with preserved lung volume in a female so then you went to uap so that is contradicting your statement so uh, uh, uap will not have a, a uh, preserved lung volume so you have to think there are some cystic changes in world that is a, a lymphangial myomitis should be your first diagnosis in a female so uh, you have to tell like you will compare the ct and previous film then you will be given the uh, ct uh, and you can uh, tell that that my diagnosis in the radiograph is uh, confirmed with multiple thin walled cysts randomly uh, distributed and there is some remaining pleural effusion then you will be given the uh, mediastinal window then you will be seeing the mediastinal window so at the edge of the film there will be a multiple angiomyelopomas then you will say that uh, i'll think the possibility of a, a multiple angioma bilateral angiomyelopomas uh, so that will be a tuberous sclerosis so we will uh, refer this to the appropriate specialty or mdt then uh, this was a 12 year old male uh, this one uh, yeah uh, actually it's an apparently normal film so in an apparently normal film what you have to show that what is your approach in a, a radiograph reading so uh, and your review areas so this is a, a very well known review area the notching bilateral rib notching with small uh, aortic neck some three shape and all so that is a correctation of aorta so this was our first case right yeah yes okay you did well okay okay now i will go next uh, for the attendees um, i have learned something from dr wasif i have moved my chat box out of my vision so if you okay. guys want to uh, discuss the cases to remain you know um, interactive you can i hope that i won't be able to see the chat so just for the sake of attendees they can discuss the case while i'm and, doing the hot and seat. while while describing uh, uh, while the hot seat session is going on so don't uh, chat and uh, no i have moved that's what i'm saying that sneeze i have moved the chat box out of my window so i should okay. not be able to see it okay okay Hello. Uh, let's try it if board... i can i will stop them yeah okay okay so can we start yes oh, okay let me start the timer uh, i cannot see your so, screen so 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 do you want me to start the timer no no i can start the timer but i cannot see your screen yeah i'm i'm uh, sharing okay so okay. it's a uh, 50 year old female no history okay so this is the frontal chest radiograph of a 50 year old female patient uh, with no history to provide it. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking at this x-ray in a systematic manner. The cardiac size appears normal. Um, in the lung windows, um, I cannot see any gross area of consolidation. Um, I have suspicion of an ill-defined uh, nodule in the mm. in the in the left lung lower zone um near the left pericardic border here yes there is a nipple shadow uh, okay okay um when i'm looking at the retrocardiac shadow it mm. uh, looks the left retrocardiac shadow appears a bit denser than the right retrocardiac shadow i uh, this one I, yes that is because of the breast okay 
So mm. now I'm moving to the hyla. They are V-shaped, mm. so they appear mm. normal, appear normal in shape. Mm. I'm looking. I'm now looking to the uh, in the in beneath the diaphragm. I do not see mm. any abnormality. Now I'm going to the bones. I'm looking at both the clavicles. They appear normal in morphology, no erosions. Um, I'm looking now at the ribs. In the first go, I'm looking on the on the left side. Um, in the retrospect, I feel that there is left apical pleural thickening when I okay. compare it to the uh, to the right side. Yes. So, however, I do not see any gross bony destruction adjacent to this shadowing. Okay. Um, patient but, came with patient came with the left sided uh, scapular pain. Okay. So, coming with the left sided scapular pain and seeing the left apical shadowing in this patient, mm. I would be uh, concerned of that this could be a sinister lesion which is causing mm. uh, the neural compromise and symptoms. So mm. in this case, I would discuss with the clinician and proceed with a contrast enhanced CT chest or an MRI okay. chest for further evaluation. So will, what will you go, MRI or CT? Uh, in a contrast enhanced CT chest because that would be quicker. Okay. So I have given okay. you the remote control. Yeah, I have it. So these are contrast enhanced CT chest with mm. diastolic windows. Mm. I'm scrolling the CT craniocaudally. I can uh, see that there is left-sided apical nodular mm. neural thickening. Um, mm. I'm going down. I do not see any hyalur or mediastinal lymph nodes. Mm. I do not see any pleural effusion. Mm. Um, um, uh, can I take the lung windows? Yes, please. Okay. So coming to the lung windows, mm. I'm going from again to top to bottom. Okay, so coming to the lung windows, I would uh, uh, retract my statement of it being a uh, plural. Mm. Um, this seems to be in the lung yes. and it's, it's aggressive, uh, yeah. it's ill-defined. Um, although this is not a lung, a bone window, but yeah. uh, on this lung window, the, the, the adjacent rib appears to be eroded and uh, distracted um, as when I compare it to the right. Um, yeah. uh, so this is a malignant pulmonary lesion yeah. with adjacent yeah. bone destruction um, okay. I'm looking at the rest of the lung windows to see that if there is any further pulmonary nodules in the Nodules. ipsilateral or the contralateral lung, I'm looking for any uh, evidence of lymphangitis carcinomatosa, which could be possible. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I cannot see it. So my next step in this case would be to get in touch with the uh, chest physician as well as the interventional radiologist to mm -hmm. get a tissue biopsy uh, for this uh, pulmonary lesion and the patient will be referred okay. to the chest MDT for further management. Okay. Okay, so the uh, CT guide biopsy was done and it was a uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So uh, what will you do next? Uh, with the squamous cell carcinoma, um, I would do the staging of this, uh, of this uh, patient. I would have to look at the mm. adrenals as well. Um, what, what, was the history that, what was the history that I told you? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, shortness. Uh, you gave me no history actually in the beginning. Yes, left, left scapular left pain. Of, yes, scapular left scapular pain. pain. So, so I would so go for the bone scan to see for the bone metastases. Okay. Uh, will you do anything else? Um, um, basically, the reason I'm doing the bone scan is, is to see the bone metastases. No, no. Uh, disregard the bone, bone scan. Will you do any other study? Okay. Um, I can do, I can think also, um, I would ask the histopathologist if you think this is a primary squamous cell carcinoma or a metastatic squamous cell carcinoma, because head and neck squamous cell carcinoma and the cervical squamous cell carcinoma can also cause it's a primary, it's a primary, it's a primary. It's a primary. I'll ask about the history of smoking. Uh, no, I'm, I'm asking you about the next investigation, radiological investigation. Uh, sorry, I cannot think of anything okay. uh, other than the staging for this patient. Okay, okay.
Okay. So yeah, this patient uh, is a twenty-year-old uh, uh, coming with uh, acute chest pain and uh, fever. Okay. So this is a, a, a frontal chest radiograph of mm. a skeletally mature patient coming mm. with, um, I believe, shortness of breath. Um, chest I think pain. I told you chest, chest pain, pain and, and uh, fever. Okay. okay. Chest pain and fever. What I can yeah. see, first of all, that there is cardiomegaly. There mm. is a left-sided uh, paravertebral lobulated lesion. The, um, the, there seems to be um, dis, a diffuse or dispersed infiltrates uh, in both that's lungs. That's a, a hilar, uh, hilum due to rotation, this one? Yeah, I'm talking about this one, the left side. If you can see my arrow, can you see my arrow? On the left paravertebral region, there seems to be a lobulated mass. Is it projection? Okay, uh, that is a iota, you. that's iota. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about this one. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, the there is there is infiltrate. That's the iota. Ground. That's iotic shadow. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm. The the bone density appears to be increased. Um, mm. The splenic shadow, the splenic flexure shadow, is quite adjacent to the diaphragm, um, mm. indicating that there is splenomegaly. I did mm. not see any cholecystectomy clips. However, mm. I'm trying to look at the uh, vertebral bodies, and they seem to have end plate compressions leading to mm. edge shaped vertebral bodies. So, in mm. conclusion, this seems to be a patient of a hematological lung disease, most likely mm. sickle cell disease, which mm. has a, a led to an acute uh, chest syndrome or sickle cell mm. crisis. And this patient mm. needs to be referred to the uh, chest uh, department for management. Okay. Sixty-year-old male, asymptomatic, screening test X-ray. Sorry. So this is the uh, frontal chest radiograph mm. of a elderly patient who is asymptomatic and has come for a pre-operative uh, screening. Mm. Um, I, I, uh, the first of all, I feel that the cardiac silhet appears to be enlarged. Uh, the, 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 there is the aortic uh, knuckle seems to be left-sided, but I can see mm. an oblong um, soft tissue shadow starting from the mm. right um, suprahilar or parahilar region and merging mm. with the heart. Um, mm. There seems to be a, a, um, a, some sort of dense or calcified tubular opacity in the- Can you show me the aortic knuckle? Yeah, I will. So I think the aortic knuckle is here. That's, that's mm. left-sided. However, there is this um, uh, oblong opacity, which is merging with the heart actually. And there seems mm. to be a, a, cal a dense or a rather calcified tubular opacity in the right retrocardic region. Um, the lungs appear grossly unremarkable. And I do not see any discrete sclerotic or lytic lesion. If, if that is aortic nickel, which is the ascending aorta? Mm, good, you are right. Um, uh, I feel this is a bit of, um, I, I understand what you're saying. So because this, this uh, uh, soft tissue shadow is actually merging with the uh, left right cardiac border, um, mm. I think this could be a case of uh, cardiac transplant where it leads to such, uh, you know, such a sort of abnormal morphology that we can see. Will you get a cardiac transplant without any median uh, sternotomy bias and surgical clip center? No, no, we can't, we can't. Okay, um, so it's an asymptomatic patient coming for a sur uh, abdominal surgery. Okay. So, um, so retracting my previous statement, mm. I would, if I make this, that this is the right-sided aortic arch, um, mm. then um, this is dextrocardia, but I cannot visualize the gastric shadow to assess whether this is, um, whether this is situs inversus or not, but I would make it a so, dextrocardia and I don't so see- So if it's a dextrocardia, then what is this? What is in the left side? Uh, the left side, you mean this one? If Where this I'm is pointing? dextrocardia, then what you are seeing on the left side, this one? What is this? 
this is a very large heart or maybe a fat pad or maybe a pericardial cyst um um okay. and the patient okay. actually is asymptomatic so okay. uh, maybe a okay. ct chest would help in further evaluation okay. if there's clinical okay. concern okay. Okay. okay so this is a 35 year old female with dyspnea mm -hmm. and cough So this is a frontal chest x-ray mm -hmm. of a skeletally mature 35-year-old female patient with mm -hmm. dyspnea and cuff. Um, what I can see is that there is, um, there seems to be volume loss in, mm -hmm. the, in the left lung. Mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a tubular uh, opacities um, mm -hmm. in, especially in the right, uh, in the left lung, mid and upper zones. Mm. Um, there are dispersed nodules in both the lung mm. fields. Um, mm. I do not see any uh, discrete uh, retrocardic shadow. Um, mm. The bone windows, uh, the bo sorry, the bony cage appears intact. Um, mm. there, uh, uh, there, the, the, the left hemidiaphragm is at the same level as the right actually. Um, hmm. So there might be some element of minimal volume loss here on the left side, as I said previously. With this hmm. tram track shadowing, um, actually it's the bronchiectasis which comes into hmm. my mind, uh, hmm. which would be explaining um, the, uh, which, which might have superadded infection, which might lead to chronic dyspnea and cuff. I hmm. would compare it with the previous um, uh, X-ray and uh, with, after discussing with the clinician, we can proceed with uh, HRCT for further evaluation in this patient. So what is your primary diagnosis? I think this is a case of bronchiectasis in this patient, which is, <coughs> sorry, which is uh, very prominent in the left parahyalur region. Why there is a volume loss? Uh, because of the, uh, because in these bronchiectasis patients, there can be um, oh, superimposed infection or mucus plugging which might lead to segmental collapse and hence volume loss on the affected side. Post-infective bronchitis, what will you call that? Uh, Post-infective, the boop. I, I think that's the old term, bronchiolitis obliterans, organizing them. Okay. 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 So, this is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally okay. mature patient. Uh, with no history. Uh, okay. What I can see is that there is a lobulated um, soft tissue density overlying the right hilar region. However, okay. I can see the, the um, hilar vessels through it. Okay. Um, the right cardiac border is also well delineated. Okay. Um, the cardiac size appears within normal limits and I do not see any gross pathology in the lungs. So mm. in summary, I see a lobulated um, uh, uh, soft tissue density overlying the right hilar region, uh, mm. which I believe is most likely posterior mediastinum uh, mm. because I can see the hilar vessels through it and the right cardiac border. My differential mm. would include uh, neurogenic tumors like uh, mm. neurofibroma or uh, schwannomas. Um, or just just sit back underneath. and see the film again. Is there any additional, additional finding? Okay, uh, so I'm reviewing um, the, the, uh, the x-ray. Um, there might be some soft tissue density in the bilateral axillary region. Uh, Ignore that. Okay, uh, the bones look osteopenic maybe. Mm. I'm looking mm. for any... Um, a left, okay, I feel that there is also a lobulated lesion along the left paravertebral region, which would make it more likely. Well, time, is, time is up. Yeah, I know. Would be extramedullary hematopoiesis, and I would take the history okay. of uh, anemia, like thalassemia, etc. Okay, okay, great, great. Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a indeed an extramedullary hematopoiesis. The, actually, you can see the clavicles, they are broadened, and there is, and the ribs are also broadened. And yes. uh, the, there are coarse uh, trabeculations. The trabeculae are very coarse. Okay. And you can see the uh, trabeculae at the humeri also. Right. So uh, this is a case of uh, thalassemia with uh, extramedullary hematopoiesis. You described the lesions very correctly. And you can uh, see that. Uh, I'll confirm with the la lateral view. Then you can see this is in the posterior mediastinum. 
and if this patient is already uh, in hematology care then you will uh, send them uh, otherwise you will send them to the hematology usually there will be hematology uh, care and uh, they will be uh, coming for a follow up uh, so once you diagnose it the film will come down then uh, uh, dyspnea cuff in a 35 year old female uh, so there was uh, actually there is a volume loss you told it correctly some tending of the diaphragm that is also suggestive of uh, volume loss and there is medias channel shift so the uh, right lung there is some hyperinflation there is some transmedias channel herniation and there is some emphysema hematic changes in the upper lobe of the left lung with lucency okay. and some bronchiectatic changes and all so uh, it was a, actually a, uh, with high riding diaphragm uh, it was a case of uh, swire james syndrome okay, uh, okay. typical features of swire james syndrome unilateral small lung uh, with air trapping it was caused by bronchiolitis obliterans of in infants or childhood so you told the term but uh, you, you, but it's okay you did not get the name so asymptomatic uh, patient 60 yeah. year old male coming for a chest x ray so uh, actually the heart is okay and uh, there is a right sided um, aortic arch and this is a lesion that is uh, in the medias tenum uh, you can see the diaphragm here but the right cardiac border is not well seen so you are given the dd of uh, pericardial cyst at the big at the end in a, uh, in a asymptomatic patient so uh, you will compare the previous film so you don't need a ct and all uh, because it is asymptomatic you just compare the previous film if it is uh, stable then you can ignore that okay right so it was a pericardial cyst and this case uh, uh, you did it correctly uh, this patient came with acute uh, chest pain and fever and all so you will compare the previous film so these are the new opacities in the left in the right lower zone with some okay. subsequent lateral tests here also so uh, so when there are any new opacities in a case of sickle cell disease you found out the h shaped vertebra some coarsening of the rib uh, bone and also uh, uh, you you found out that uh, what the splenic shadow you look look for the cholecystectomy clips you looked at the humeral head and all so it's an emergency and you have to refer it to the uh, indian specialist or any chest physician for proper management of the chest uh, acute chest syndrome uh okay that you did okay. and in the lateral view they will uh, you can find out the h shaped vertebra very clearly here it was a sickle cell uh, disease with acute chest syndrome and uh, this one uh okay uh, yeah uh, this one actually uh, it is an apparently normal film you will not find uh, the diagnosis at all of a sudden so you uh, described it correctly you are going through systematically from one review area to other review area so the examiner will uh, help you uh, like to lead you to a diagnosis so finally you found out the opacity in the left uh, upper zone uh, it can be a pleural thickening it can be a pancos tumor it can be a superior sulcus tumor so you described this uh, you described the ct very correctly and you found out the rib uh, erosion and all and uh, uh, sent them for an mdt and for a guided biopsy so since this patient is having neurological pain then you have to find out whether the brachial plexus is involved oh, okay so you should yes. you have to do an mri brachial plexus to see the status of the brachial plexus that was yeah. i am asking about the next radiological investigation so i forgot about uh, uh, scrolling the films in a uh, exam uh, in the vgas case the last case she was scrolling up scrolling down scrolling up scrolling down multiple times so that will be irritating for the examiner you just uh, you say that i am taking some moment to review the film you go from up and down or from down and up once and then you stop at the relevant area relevant finding area and you start describing it while describing it you don't go uh, again you don't jerk the image like this so that will be uh, distracting so okay am okay. i clear Oh yes. Thank you, Doctor uh, Sneej. Uh, Doctor Maha, you are next. Uh, I don't know if people put anything on the chat box or not. Yes, I could not see. Yes. So, uh, Doctor Maha, you should also yes. do the same. Okay. Uh, just okay. move the chat yeah, box. Yeah. Don't don't the... don't don't chat while. Uh, Doctor Sneej, we can't see it. I couldn't see it. They okay. were chatting. We didn't <laughs> see it. 
so let the okay. attendees you know they would sleep <laughs> to our <Okay>. session <laughs> okay. Okay. as long as maha is moving the chat box out of her vision she won't yes, be able sir. to see it. yeah yes. I, i disabled the chat now okay okay dr uh, sunis no need to disable the chat it's fine <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay uh you can start the screen okay so this is i uh, uh, sabath have you started the timer ah uh, i am sorry yes started go ahead okay 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 so this is a frontal chest radiograph of an apparently oh. adult uh, patient um oh. uh, the first thing that catches okay, my so eyes what's your name what what's your name maha maha Maha, okay, okay, Maha from e- Egypt, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, the first thing that catches my eye is the presence of a well-defined, uh, rounded mm. uh, notches from a malignant uh, melanoma or uh, um, any okay, other. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll give you the. You are Maha Elasa, right? Yes, right. Okay, you can control. Okay. I move from down here. I think. Yes. Um. um okay it's just a little bit slow okay so these are uh, chest um uh, axial ct scans of the lung of the same patient uh this is the lung window it shows the presence of this area of uh, consolidation uh, which is displaying the uh, classic uh Can I can you scroll because I really do have a problem with this. It's really um uh, a uh, very slow. Hmm. You want to go up or down? No, no, down. Just to display the lesion. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. So this lesion is uh, is uh, showing an air a crescent of uh, of air and also surrounding ground glassing, which represents the uh, invasion into the surrounding lung parenchyma. Um, mm. So uh, I cannot see any other uh, similar lesions in both lung fields, mm. uh, as far as I can see. Yes. Um, mm. So I would still keep my main differentials as um, uh, either a an aspergilloma, uh, and I would mm. review the clinical history of this patient. And also, what I'd like, are you doing? Doing it? Um, uh, if this patient has a history of uh, uh, asthma or he is allergic, um, no history of asthma, not allergic. Oh, okay. So uh, if this patient is immunocompromised uh, or he has uh, any other um, yeah, uh, debilitating... Yeah, this patient is immunocompromised. Yeah, this patient yes. is immunocompromised. Okay. Uh, so this would make my suggestion, which is uh, my first differential would be a case of aspergilloma and um, my second differential would be still a um, metastatic process from any uh, unknown primary. So I will convey my findings. What do you, to... what do you mean by aspergilloma? uh it's it's a um let me remember uh asper it's the it's um it's a fungal infection by aspergillus fumigatus and this causes a fungus ball uh mm-hmm. within the within a pre-existing cavity um mm-hmm. um however i think mm-hmm. no no i think I, i i would just retract this i think this is a case of mm-hmm. anti invasive aspergillosis where there is mm-hmm. a um um mm-hmm. invasion of the surrounding lung, lung parenchyma which is uh, seen through the uh, um um mm-hmm. surrounding halo sign so this is mm-hmm. an immunocompromised patient with an anti invasive aspergilloma aspergillosis and you and you so so what will you uh, so what will you expect in the blood counts in the i'm sorry what will you expect in the blood counts when you see this uh, air crescent sign uh, um in i think it, um uh, i'm i'm not sure of that uh is it a, is it a good prognostic sign or a bad prognostic sign no 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 this is absolutely a bad sign because it shows the invasion into the lung parenchyma however the presence of the the air crescent is mm. um is likely to be due to the uh, that the patient has started treatment so probably that the part of the necrotic part of the lung is 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 mm. is um is um um is detaching from the necrotic process no i i mm. think this, that back i think it it's it is a good prognosis because okay. this usually shows that the patient has started okay. treatment yes okay okay so this patient came to ed with some uh, back pain 
it's a okay. uh, uh, it's a sixty uh, sixty five year old male with back pain. Back pain. Okay. So this is a frontal chest radiograph of an eighty year old patient who's presenting with uh, back pain. Uh, um. Okay, so there is evidence of air under the diaphragm on the right side, or um, that's colon. Um, okay, so okay, so I, I will I will take the film systematic. I will review first uh, the lung apices, mm -hmm. which appear to be unremarkable, and then mm -hmm. uh, I'm moving to the cardiac uh, contour, which appears to be slightly uh, deformed. However. I can still see the aortic knuckle quite well. Mm. Mm. Uh, both hyla appear to be within average. However, there is accentuation of the, no, let me check. There is no evidence of pneumothorax, mm. as far as I can see, yes. Um, uh, okay. I am reviewing the vertebral bodies. Mm. There is a slight sclerosis noted within the lower um, lower vertebrae, I think, just uh, oh, yes. behind, behind the diaphragm. Mm. I can see also that there is a um, a, right, a left paravertebral um, thickening or um, 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 uh, left paravertebral. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's that's projectional, okay. Mm. So I am suspecting that there is evidence of uh, a vertebral destruction, which is noted mm. within the uh, lower uh, thoracic uh, vertebra. Mm. Um, however, I, I would like to review another uh, view, for example, the lateral, uh, the lateral view of the chest radiograph, just to uh, uh, compare the heights of these vertebra. Uh, is, there, is there any additional finding in the chest? Uh, yes, I can see a double cardiac contour on the left side, but I'm not sure. Uh, I can see the, the left cardiac contour, but however, there's another one yeah, just what behind is this? it. What is this? Oh, yes, I, oh, yes. this is the uh, opacification. Uh, mm. I'm not able to see the left, the right cardiac border. Mm. So uh, this would make it a, uh, a case of... Uh, uh, um, Okay, so this is, um, I don't know, I lost the uh, the track. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you the lateral view. Okay, yes, so that's the case of pectus excavatum. Yes, of course, it's mm. very, <laughs> it's very obvious. Okay, mm. so the lateral chest radiograph demonstrates that it, 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 it signifies that this is a case of pectus and this was really obvious from the frontal view with the absence mm. of the right cardiac border. So yes. you want to... Uh... So this patient, add, add I would, um, I could still see that there is a uh, a, car, a retrocardiac uh, shadow, but I'm not sure at the moment. Uh, so what is the complaint the patient came with? Patient came with back pain. Okay. So what was mm -hmm. your uh, what was your positive finding in the frontal radiogram? Well, uh, the the vertebra, but I, I can't see anything abnormal here. In okay. the vertebral you, are, you, are you are retracting the statement or you are keeping with the statement? Uh, well, um, uh, okay, no, I, I think I'm retracting it. I can't see it on the lateral film. I can only see the pectus and I can see the... Uh, Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So what do you do next? So I would uh, let me check again. Okay. So yes, uh, can I just take this back? <laughs> I know I'm hesitating a little bit today. Um, okay. I can I can't see that the lower the last two vertebrae on the lateral film they are a little mm. bit uh, radiolucent. However, the one mm. just above is a little bit uh, radio mm. opaque, right? So, mm -hmm. so I would I would say that this is a, a this could be given the age of the patient that he's an eight mm -hmm. year old and presenting mm -hmm. with back pain. This could represent a uh, metastatic uh, process with the sclerosis mm -hmm. of this vertebra. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, however, mm -hmm. it's keeping with the vertebral height. I would refer this patient further to a CT of the chest, uh, abdomen, and the pelvis, and also for a bone mm. scan. Okay. Okay, so this is the CT, yes. So Press there are multiple areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are multiple sclerotic uh, metastatic deposits noted within mm, mm. the multiple thoracic vertebra. And mm. however, they are still keeping their heights. There is no evidence mm. of collapse or fractures. Mm. Uh, so this in, in, in the patient's history with the age, I think uh, it, it's highly suggestive of a prostatic cancer with osteosclerotic metastasis. I would mm. refer this patient further for a bone scan and, uh, uh, and the pelvic MRI. Uh, for yeah, bone scan? Yes, so the bone scan is showing um, multiple areas of uh, high uptake noted uh, within the spine as well as the uh, uh, the peripheral, the bones, the, the humerus, uh, as well as the ribs and the, uh, the right iliac bone, the hip mm. joints. So these are multiple um, um, uh, multiple bony metastatic uh, uh, process likely attributed to uh, uh, prostate cancer. Okay. What is his appearance called? Uh, so this is a super scan because I'm not able to see the renal, uh, mm. the, renal uh, the renal shadows. Okay. I'm at a static super scan. Okay. So this is a preoperative chest X-ray for a 40-year-old male patient. Hmm. Okay, so this is a uh, frontal chest radiograph of a 40-year-old patient. This is preoperatively. Um, the first thing that I can see is the presence of a tubular structure, which is uh, projecting um, just lateral to the left cardiac border, uh, the right cardiac border, and hmm. I can see uh, this would likely represent a. Uh, um, a scimitar lesion or a um, mm. anomalous drainage of the right lung. Also, mm. given that the right lung uh, size appears to be smaller and compared to mm. the left, uh, so mm. this is a case of uh, congenital venal lober syndrome or uh, scimitar. Uh, okay, syndrome. this patient came with the uh, uh, chest pain in the ED with shortness of breath. Okay, so this say, is a twenty-year-old, twenty-year-old male. A 20 year old. Okay, so this is a uh, frontal chest radiograph of a 20 year old patient who is presenting with chest pain. So, um, um, Okay, I can't. I can't see. There is a, a linear translucency noted al along the right, uh, car the left cardiac border. Um, mm. um, um, I think it could represent a new mediastinum. Mm. Um, however, the rest of the cardiac contour appears to be uh, unremarkable. Hmm. Uh, the mediastinum appears to be within average. However, I can see there is slight thickening of the right paratracheal region. Hmm. Uh, both lung fields appear to be unremarkable. Costophrenic hmm. angles are free. The... Um, the bones and the bony cage appear to be unremarkable. Mm. Okay, so this is a 20 year old and um, I'm suspecting that um, he, he, he appears to be a tall person, I think, or something. So the presence of this new mediastinum could be attributed mm. to Marfan case because of the appearance of the heart and it uh, looks like ribbon shaped as if, as if the chest is hyperinflated or something. I'm not what sure. Um, I would review the previous x-rays for this patient. I would also clinically assess the patient uh, to see his, uh, his, uh, how, he, how he looks. Um, he, was, he was doing uh, uh, rigorous exercise in the morning, then suddenly this came. Vigorous exercise? Yeah. Uh, Just to inform the 15 minutes. Whoa, they, they passed really fast. Okay, okay. okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so this is a, actually you can see the linear lucency around the left cardiac border and you yes. can see the uh, lucency around the trachea mm -hmm. and the soft tissues and that is extending to the neck. And there is a, yes. a thin pneumo, pneumothorax also with some visceral pleural line here. Mm -hmm. So it's a spontaneous pneumomediastinum with surgical mm -hmm. emphysema extending to the uh, neck. 
uh, no, not surgical emphysema, sorry, uh, pneumomediastinum extending to, uh, around the great vessels and extending so around the no trachea. there is no trauma, right? Uh, so, mm. Yeah, it's actually a spontaneous pneumothorax in 20-year-old male and old. It can come with any other, uh, any uh, aggravations like uh, rigorous exercise, valsalva manor, or it can be a, a difficult lab, a labor or any continuous cuff. So these okay. are the precipitating factors for spontaneous pneumomediastinum. So the complications are pneumothorax and uh, it can uh, cause a tension pneumothorax. It can uh, lead to secondary infection and all. So you have to uh, uh, inform the referring clinician, this patient must be admitted and patient is to be observed given uh, conservative management to see whether it is progressing or not. So well, it's uh, just what... because of vigorous exercise? That yeah, he got... can, uh, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's usually seen in uh, um, young age males Usually, mm -hmm. 20 to 25 year old males. Okay. It was a, it was a preoperative chest X-ray. It was just an own mini. Uh, as soon mm -hmm. as you diagnose the uh, Schmitter syndrome with the hypogenetic right lung mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, hyper expanded left lung, the film will come down. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to tell the, all the findings. Like uh, there is uh, right lung is relatively small. There is a uh, Schmitter like uh, mm -hmm. vascular shadow in the right uh, lower zone. Mm -hmm. And tell that uh, diagnosis. That's all. Uh, no need of uh, no discussion will happen. So mm -hmm. here, uh, uh, actually, uh, it's a 60, uh, sorry, a 75 year old male coming with the back pain. So this is a very uh, good example for the block on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, there, uh, it, it will imitate the right middle lobe consolidation. Yes, so yes. Usually, uh, uh, usually, uh, you will be exclaimed why these uh, examiners are showing us the pectus excavatum again and again in the mm -hmm. uh, exam. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually, you can avoid an unnecessary CT in a young patient if mm -hmm. coming with the uh, features of uh, right middle lobe pneumonia. But if you are not seeing the right cardiac border, you are seeing the uh, horizontal the posterior and the slanting the uh, anterior ribs yes and yes. Uh, and uh, you have to suspect a pectus excavatum with these uh, findings and uh, you have correctly picked up uh, none yes. of the candidates uh, picked up this uh, sclerotic rib lesions in the frontal radiographic <laughs> right, <didn't> <laughs> <laughs> you, you did well and you Very odd. The frontal radiograph but you missed it in the lateral yes, and you yes. the treatment <laughs> <laughs> Again, you gave it. No, so I take the, it the uh, hard way. <laughs> usually, the candidate will pick up in yes. the lateral view. <laughs> but, yes, you're right. But extremely well. So, uh, that was a, a case of. I kept uh, looking at the pectus and what's going on. <laughs> and I, I did. <laughs> yeah, it's a very difficult film. So, once you diagnose the sclerotic uh, mm. vertebral erection, then only uh, you will get the CT. Then mm. you will uh, uh, see the. Yes. Uh, you will uh, confirm the factors and you will confirm multiple sclerotic lesions. Then you have to yes. suggest a, a bone scan and then you will get a bone scan. It's a metastatic bone yes. scan. Uh, usually, mainly the axial skeleton is involved. The, you are not seeing any uh, distal appendicular skeleton here. Yes. That is typical of uh, uh, metastatic bone scan. Apart from Actually, a, you know a what? I, I, bone scan. I, I felt very and stupid for not catching the, the renal. Practice. Uh, you are I not seeing the, uh, uh, renal, uh, renal and the bladder shadow. Yes. And yes. I think this is a injection site, may not mm -hmm. be the lesion. Yes. Uh, but you are describing it as a, a, a lesion. Yes. Mostly it will be an injection site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have yes. to refer it to the MDT and uh, evaluate uh, further. Mm -hmm. So for this one, uh, is there is a lesion, a round lesion in the mid zone. Yes. Uh, and that is showing a crescent of air here. So here uh, you have to give your DDs as per the clinical features. You, mm -hmm. you, you should ask the examiner the clinical features. You have to tell like if this patient is uh, having, is, is an immunocompetent and already have any uh, tuberculous disease or any tubercular, known case of tubercular cavity, then I will think the possibility of an aspergilloma mm -hmm. uh, in a pre-existing cavity. So this mm -hmm. patient is an immunocompromised patient and with the recent improvement in neutropenia with the treatment, Yes. Then I'll think the possibility of an invasive aspergillosis uh, with the uh, IR crescent sign. So, and the other DDs as you told. So, um, uh, you are uh, confusing with an aspergilloma and aspergillosis. Yes. Then, uh, then the examiner will ask you some leading question. But after asking the question, you you are uh, you make made it clear. So that was mm -hmm. fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So here you can see the halo, ground glass halo surrounding. Mm -hmm. That is the mm -hmm. typical of invasive aspergillosis. You will not see mm -hmm. that in Aspergilloma. The surrounding lung will be mostly normal. And mm -hmm. uh, this is actually sloughing of the nephro necrotic, uh, yes. necrotic yes. lung tissue because of the mm -hmm. in, in improvement in host immunity. 
so that is a good prognostic sign uh, this air consent sign is good prognostic but i think this was a first film right yes yes thank yeah, you so uh, much dr to... sanid really the cases okay. are really amazing thank you so much okay. thank you okay, thank you okay yeah, thank you dr sanid for a very wonderful yeah. session and a, a special yeah. thanks to all our hot seat candidates uh, yeah. who volunteered and sat on the hot seat which we all yeah. know is yeah. is very hot um, so um, any you can miss so many things in the hot seat which everyone else can see it's okay that is what we are trying to how many practice. candidates we uh, examined today sabad we examined five dr sanid okay so the uh, those who candidates who we have examined please remember that in the next week uh, i think on 16th uh, we will have a cna session and you will be the examiners so please prepare playlists and we'll be uh, allocating the volunteers for the uh, hot seat for the next session okay okay, okay. okay. thank you everyone um, uh, and thank you all the candidates you did mm -hmm. a lot of benefit for the whole audience thank you so much have a good night and have yeah. a good day bye bye thank you thank you very much bye